surfing. Now, surfing all starts with the wave. These waves here are long and rolly, and these are the type of waves that you'd find in the open ocean. But these are not the waves that we really love or enjoy. These are. But how do we get from long and rolly to these big, huge, crumbling waves? It all has to do with the slope of the beach. Now, most beaches have a gradual incline, and as the wave comes in, the bottom part of the wave is being slowed down by the sand. And this means that there's a certain point where the top part of the wave will literally overpass the bottom part. And this is when it falls apart and breaks. Now, this effect it can vary a lot depending on the slope. If the slope is very minimal, then that means that the waves will be smaller. Whereas if it's very steep, the waves will be bigger. Also, if there's a reef or any sort of natural structure that's very abrupt, the waves will be the biggest. Now, when waves break, they are releasing a lot of energy. And that is why surfers will always go on at the point when it breaks. Have you ever wondered why surfers paddle? Well, it's actually pretty simple. To catch the wave, the board and the surfer has to be going at the same speed with the same momentum as the wave. However, some waves are huge, and they are way too big and way too fast to paddle. So tow-in surfing was created, where a surfer is actually towed by a jet ski so they can get up to the same momentum as those gigantic waves. So now, once you've got up, all it is is just a matter of balance. The center of gravity at a surfboard is towards the back, and if your feet are too far up front, then you'll probably flip. That's why a hang ten is so hard. And even if you do all this, you'll probably still fall once, or twice, or maybe multiple times if you're like me. And now that you're up, you can enjoy the ride.